Hello and welcome back to another video. So in this video we are going to carry on with the design in Photoshop. So like I said in the previous video, we're at the very final stage now of uh, building the site. Uh, and then, then the, the videos after this one will be how to add in all of the password resets, the logins and all that good stuff in the members section. So I'm just going to come down the page and the next thing we're going to add is add in this white box here. But there's a few things we need to slice out first of all. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to try and go as quickly as I can just to get this done. So we go to the slice tool and we're going to slice around this clock. So like that. Just zoom in a tiny bit just to adjust this side. So I'm going to call this, funnily enough, clock. And then I'm going to move over to here and I'm going to put a slice around this one like that double click on it and I'm going to call this just call that T it was more like coffee but anyway um, so press the V key to move back to the move tool and just zoom out slightly so we've created the slices around the images uh, but there's also a gradient in the background of this white box so again we need to grab that out as well so I'm going to zoom in near the near the clock so in between the clock and the text so we've got this straight line down here uh, zoom in a little bit more so I'm going to grab the slice tool again and if you look at the actual image if I come down there's a white line here and then it starts with the gradient effect so I'm going to click about here and then drag it up and it gradually starts to get lighter and lighter and lighter until it turns white so I'm going to stop it about there double, double click on this slice and I'm going to call what well, this whole box is going to be called um, features if it's a software layout then you can put in your features about your software so I'm going to call this features BG and save that so I'm going to zoom out press the V key to change back to the move tool so we've now created the three slices that we need but now we need to actually get them out of Photoshop so um, the first one we're going to grab out will be the thin slice here so I'm going to do file save web and devices and just come down the page and zoom in with control and plus and it's this slice here that we want so if we select that and click on save and then make sure that these uh, slices is selected to selected slices and then that will save it into your images folder now the other ones we need to do something slightly different click on the layers panel if you haven't got it open and then I'm going to click on the clock here which then brings you down to the layer and I'm going to hold the alt key and click on the eye symbol so that's now made everything transparent I'm going to click file, save for web and devices, click on the clock here and I want to change the uh, format to PNG24 which has now made it transparent, click save, uh, you get the idea now, I've done it quite a few times and click save again, so hold the alt key and click on the eye brings everything back and then click on the coffee icon here or the T icon, do the same thing again and then do file, save for the web and again we want to change this to PNG24 click save and save again so I'm going to hold down the alt key to bring everything back and we're good to go so now we've sliced all those out we need to go over to visual web developer so I've actually found a problem with the design it's not a major problem we can overcome it but the problem is we've got this main content we're adding all of our content into which is divided into two sections so we've got the sidebar which comes all the way down here and the main content that comes all the way down here now in the Photoshop design that uh, white bar stretches all the way across so we can't actually add that into this main content bottom holder at the bottom so the way we're going to do it, if we go to the source, so basically this main content area is where we're holding the sidebar and the main content area. So to have it stretch all the way across, we're going to come out of the main content area and we're going to add in div with an ID and we'll call this features. 
like that, and then that's going to close us. Just call it features, like that. So we've now got our div. So if I just create a bit of space. So we just need to style this now. So I'm just going to go to the style sheet and I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to add in features and then we're going to style it with the following. So I'm just going to move up the page slightly. So the width of the actual div for the features is going to be 753 pixels. The height is going to be 100 pixels and we'll give it a background color of white so if we just save that and just preview that in the default page and if I hit refresh you can see the uh, the div is actually up here uh, which isn't in the right place so there's a couple of things we need to change this main content area with the gray box that's a, a set pixel width, so we need to change that to auto. Um, so if we do that now, so if I just minimize this, and if we go to the style sheet, and if we come up the page slightly, and you will find here on the main content, the height is set to 500 pixels, which we don't want. We want to change that to auto. Now if I just go back to the web page and hit refresh, you can now see it looks even worse. Now, basically what we need to do is we need to clear the sidebar float and the uh, the main content float as well. So all of this will then start to look right. So where we're going to do this, if we go back to the style sheet and come down the page, and if we're on features here, we're just going to say clear both like that. And if we just preview that in the web page and hit refresh, you can now see it's all come back down to how we're expecting it to, because it's now cleared this float and this float. So we're looking pretty good now. What we need to do is just need to make this a little bit longer. So if we just go back to the web page, and if we say the features here is 765, and if we just preview that in the web page and hit refresh, just needs a little bit more. So if we say 770 and then preview that one more time. So that's looking pretty good to me. So all we need to do now is add in some of the images and the text and the border and whatnot. So if we just go back. So on the features, we want to add a border around the actual box. So we're going to say one pixel solid line that's CCC. So if you just preview that in the web page and hit refresh, you can now see we've got a nice one pixel line all the way around. So I think the length of it needs to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to change this to an extra five pixels. And if we just preview that and hit refresh, that's looking a little bit better now. Okay, so we now need to add the background image into the actual div itself. So on the features, we're going to say background image so we're going to point to a URL so it's going to be back a folder into our images folder and then it's going to be I believe features bg.jpg and save that now if we just go back to the web page and view that and hit refresh it's a very subtle gradient but you can actually see that that's in there now um, so now if we just go back over to Visual Web Developer. So what we want to add in now is we want to say background repeat, but only across the X axis. So that'll go horizontally across the screen and it won't do any vertical uh, repeating. So we're just going to say here, so we're going to say padding on the bottom of the box. If we just give it say four pixels of padding and then if we go back to the web page and if we hit refresh, it gives us this nice little uh, line here that sort of blends in quite nicely with the actual gradient effect. So now we've got all that set up, we just need to add in a unordered list that will have two list items. So we'll have the clock here with the text and then we'll float the other one 
to the right of it and then that will be the coffee cup with the uh, text next to that. So if we just go back into Visual Web Developer and go to the default page, so inside of here, so inside of the features we're going to create a UL, move up the page, so a list item and then I'll create another list item underneath like that. So if we just come over here to our Solution Explorer and hit refresh, that will refresh all of the images. So I want to grab the clock and put it in between the first list item. Just change some of this, there we go. And then we want the coffee or the tea, whichever you called it, and paste it in the one below. Or drag it, sorry, to the one below. So if we just look at that in design, you can now see we've got the two images and we know the list items because they've got the dots here. Now we also want to have some text next to them as well. So if we go back to the source, just create a bit of space for each one so we can read our code. So I'm just going to jump over to Photoshop and I'm going to grab some of this uh, text so we can add it into the list items. So I can grab the text tool by pressing T on the keyboard and I'm just going to literally copy this straight out and if I paste it here and paste it on the one underneath as well save that and go to the design so you can now see we're getting somewhere close to the actual design now but we haven't styled any of this so the way we're going to style it if we basically go back to the source and just move this over slightly and then we're going to give this an ID and call it features list like that so now we can target this one so I'm going to come back so under here I'm going to create a UL with an ID of featured list and then I'm going to copy it and paste one underneath just move up the page and this one will have a list item so for this I'm just going to give it a height of auto and then for these list items, we want to basically give these a width as well. So the width, we'll just say for now, will be 350 pixels. And the height will be auto. If you just look at that in the, the default page. So you can now see we've got two um, list items and we now need to float them. What we also need to do is remove these dots, so I'll quickly, quickly do that now. So on the list item, we're going to say list style none. Back to the default, and then they, they have now gone. So we're going to float these now. So on the list item here, we're going to say float. I'm going to say to the left. And if we go back now, you can now see they're actually floating. So we need to target these images individually. So we're going to say, we'll copy this, create some space so we can see what we're doing, paste it here, but we're going to say a list item that has an image, all we want to do is just float that to the left, save that, and just check that out in the browser. So you can now see the text is now floating to the right hand, just to the right hand side of each image. So if we just minimize that, what we now need to do, we need to tell the unordered list to have some margin on the top and the left to move into position. So the thing we're going to use, if we come up to the feature list here and say margin, we're going to say the top is 25 pixels, on the right is 0, on the bottom is 0, and on the left is 45 pixels, which will kick it over and down. So if I just go back to the web page, and if we hit refresh, you can now see they're getting really close to how we want it. The next thing we need to do is tell the image to have a bit of uh, margin on the right, which will kick the text away. So if we just do that now. So here on the actual images, we're going to say margin right if we just give that five pixels and save that and if we just go back to the web page hit refresh you can now see the text has been kicked away so the final thing we're going to style now is the text itself 
what we can actually do for the actual text because we're using the paragraph tag up here and we've already set up the styling we can just hook into that so the text that we pasted into the list item we can just do p and then copy the closing paragraph tag to the end and just paste it here like that and then do the same on this one so p again and then we just need to move this one to the very end like that and we save that and if we just preview that in the web page and now all this text will change straight away so now that's looking quite nice to me so what I think we do need to do is actually add a bit of spacing in between them because they're quite close together so if we just go back to visual web developer and if we go to the actual style sheet and on the list item themselves what we'll do we'll say write and we'll say 10 pixels like that so if we just preview that in the web page and hit refresh you can now see it's got a bit more space uh, but what I think we should probably do is actually take off some of the margin left because that's a bit closer now so just quickly go back to the style sheet and we'll take off say that to 35 and then that should bring it all back into position and there you go so we've got that bit sorted out so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave the video here for now um, and I'm going to start making the other videos now to add in the password resets the login controls uh, the memberships and all that good stuff so as usual guys thanks for watching please leave any comments below feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video